Hey family, thank you for tuning in to Our Roots Podcast with Joseph Babaifa. We're only the strongest roots see the light, brought to you by Botanica Candles and more. And if you haven't had the opportunity, please like this video and hit that subscribe button. Great episode today, Ifa and cannabis. And the gentleman we're going to be interviewing is nothing short of a professional in this field. He is the CEO of Green Source Florida. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Tony Burroughs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Baba. Oh, man, I appreciate you. you. It's it's always a pleasure to have you. It's always a pleasure to see Orumila growing within you. And thank you for taking the time to sit with us and speak to the public about this, what I feel to be a very important topic. All right. I'm kind of surprised to hear you say that. And I think a lot of people are going to be because <laughs> I think it's important that people understand how accepting Ifa is and how Orula just focuses on the facts. And, you know, when we look at something as cannabis, um, the benefits cannot be denied. But before we get into all of the great things you have going on within the industry, we want to get into you and who you are. Right. So um, let, let's let's hear a little bit about your background, where you're from and whatnot. All right. So, um I would be what most consider a traditional island boy. However, um, I was born in Miami, moved back to the islands at the age of two. Mm. So, you know, my memories of early born in the States is nil, mm -hmm. basically zero. Was raised in the Bahamas, uh, both parents from the Bahamas. Uh, first of all, growing up in the islands is, is, is awesome. Yeah. It's uh, an experience that you have to basically have extreme insight or else you'll take it extremely for granted. Yeah. Uh, growing up in small neighborhoods in a community, community based neighborhoods is, is, you know, like you could get whoopings from anybody. Yeah. yeah. You know your your I mean? neighbor so, is your uncle. Exactly. You know, so respect manners and, you know, courtesy was, was, you know, kind of the base of my broad up sea. My mom, my aunt, my grandma, my other aunt, my other aunt, my other aunt, about four aunts were teachers, and I've almost been taught by all of them. Beautiful. So it's like, like I said, like a small community, small, close-knit community in the islands. Uh, came back to the States in high school and finished over here in college. So I think I kind of had the best of both worlds. Yeah, you know, definitely. A childhood in the islands. And before my childhood was done, I was exposed to the bigger picture. So, yeah. Um, went to college in Missouri, studied business, moved to Orlando, and uh, continued my college studies. Um, I went into entertainment studies at Full Sail. And at that point, I was fully into entertainment as a DJ, which yeah. was honestly my entire career as you know, a college student, a high school student, music is what I thought I would be doing right now, full time. But you know, uh, Ifa and Elegua has his, his his choices. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he's definitely giving you good advice, and you capitalized on it by aligning with your destiny. You know, I love the Bahamas. I love yeah. Bahamian people. Um, some of the nicest, most beautiful people I've ever interacted with. Um, so I gotta ask, you know, growing up, being in that ambiance, was was cannabis something that was present? You know. Or even public, or even was it something that was, I guess, was it communally accepted, you know? Well, from the islands, and the Bahamas is probably one of the more restrictive islands, traditionally, like in my oh. era. Now it's probably different, but in my era it was more restrictive than, like, say, Jamaica or somewhere okay. like, like Trinidad and Tobago or something like that. But even then, as a DJ, you know, I started smoking cannabis late as, you know, just, you know, part of culture yeah everybody i knew smoked cannabis yeah i played soccer football for for most of my my yeah. life i played for the national team and wow. i was so deep into sports that smoking like i never looked down on on cannabis but it was just like i was always exercising or training yeah that it was nothing that i knew that could help me at that point because yeah. you know if you the bad part about the islands is you know everybody the only form of consumption in the islands is 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 smoking inhaling yeah i mean so we were never big on on making tinctures or edibles or other for other forms of of consumption that would probably be more healthy for like an athletic person or you know we were in the past yeah. and that was just my era you know i was born in the 80s grew up in the 90s that type just yeah. as a side note real quick for all those that don't know what is a tincture 
a tincture is an oral inhalation process where you would basically get an alcohol-based cannabis um, concentrated. You would put a drop under your tongue and boom, you feel the results in 15 seconds. Really streamlined then. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. So it's it's like super medicinal. So tinctures, the most popular tincture would be RSO, which is Rick Simpson oil. It's a Canadian product and it's one of the more popular can, um, cancer treatments. Nice. So anybody that's in... Um, uh, what they call it, radioactive treatment for cancer. Yeah, like chemo and things chemo, like that. Chemo, exactly. Um, you have problems with your diet. You have problems with nausea. RSO, Rick Simpson, is one of the most worldwide renowned, um, you know, products that will help you through those treatments. Oh, that's incredible, man. And you hear all the benefits. Now, do you remember your first experience? Of course. <laughs> what was that like? What was what was the scene? If if it's if it's uh, if <laughs> if we can actually talk about it, you know. All right, so um, wow, I don't know how honest I should be, but long story short, anything I that was, doesn't get us in trouble. I at was home. exposed to cannabis at a very young age, but like I said, I was never very interested into to the smoking part of yeah. it because I realized real fast, like you know, everybody that smoked was not the people working out with us. Yeah, like, there was you know, no like, stamina. You know, what I'm saying? you're not hitting goals like they, that. No, you are not keeping up with me. If <laughs> yeah. you was, you smoke weed, okay, come on, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll play you. You know. Um, but, um, my first experience was definitely with my brothers. I, I have, you know, four brothers. Beautiful. And, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I was the only one that, that, that didn't consume. Yeah. So, uh, it was one of those days that I pr I'm pretty sure it was just like a regular day at our house. Yeah. Word. And one of my, my, my best friends that was in high school with me that I played soccer with. You know, he decided like, yo, we gonna try this, and I'm like, nah. It was man. like Friday. It was like, like he was man, just, like, he was nah, just it's smoky. Just smoky, yes. And I'm like, nah, man, we can't. Come on, do Craig. This. Like, man, we seen these fools smoke a thousand times. Word, like, word. why would we do this? You know. And sure enough, my my big brother he asked me. He's like, yo. I'm like, no. You trying to look cool? I mean, you trying to hang on? My intention was to pass it on. Word. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was a one and done experience. Okay, so mm -hmm. how how long did it go before you you decided, hey, we're gonna give this another another round? If you can, recall. it was maybe like a year. At this point, I had an injury, so I had broke my ankle. Twelfth grade, yeah. Athletic career basically done. Yeah, you dashing know, dreams. You know, it's yeah, it's crazy. Lost like four scholarships to to college, oh. and you know, uh, one depression and just like you know, like shoot. This is medicine. I knew it as like medicinal. So yeah. before I started to smoke it, I would drink tea. My yeah. grandma would make tea. And that was just part of like like herbs. Because um when I broke my ankle in therapy, they they had um sent uh prescribed me a whole bunch of opioids. Yeah. Yeah. And I was not with it. I would just prefer to like yeah. I would prefer to not go to school and be in pain than to take these pills, you know, because They're so addictive. I was well Growing up, I never took Advil, Tylenol. It was, yeah, it was just yeah. It was just so much. I felt so diff so much different feelings when I was taking those ex like hard painkillers. I, I couldn't do it, you know. So that was my real introduction to cannabis as a pain medication, and it wasn't smoking. It was drinking tea. Yeah, you know. So that was the reason why I think I continued into it, even after, like my my injury healed. The reason I I started, you know, continuing into smoking cannabis and just consuming cannabis on a whole was as a healing process. And that's that's really incredible because I can see where somebody can can, be, can become passionate about something. When you have, you know, this medicine that's helping you feel better, not giving you the guilt of what something else might, such as an opioid, and then you're seeing the results. You know, at what point um, did you realize, hey, this is – a career. This is something that I can delve into and dedicate my time to, to not only help myself, but others. That would be very, very far down the line. Yeah. I'm 36 years old. Nice. So the time period that we're talking about between introduction to cannabis to a profession in cannabis is a whole culture change. It's a whole, it's two decades of, you know, status quo. It's, you know, Going from our grandparents, it's going from pot to to hemp. Yeah, hemp is a word that people don't care. As you see it on a bottle in Walmart. Yeah, and lotion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, pot, cannabis, weed, 
marijuana, those words all come with the extreme taboo. Yeah. And I'm from a generation of that taboo, you know, yeah. like my parents, my grand, nobody that I know was cool. Yeah, it has you stigma. Know? Exactly. Yeah. It's an extreme stigma. Yeah. You know, and in different cultures, you know, the, the extremity ranges. In the islands, you know, everybody smokes pot, but still my grandparents, my even my mom, she's just now coming around. Like yeah. now you can see, because it's illegal now, she accepts it. Yeah. But we've been telling, you know, I've been trying to, you know, been preaching to the choir, but, yeah. you know, it is what it is. People, most people go with the law and the law has come a long way since in 20 years. I think there's so much information now to um, the open mindedness to understanding what's really going on here, because I think most people deep down inside say it's a plant. You know, and when we look at like Odu Zavifa, such as, you know, the Odu Osarete, um, where it speaks of when people weren't getting resolutions to their issues, right? And they would visit the doctors, but they really didn't have any solutions with the methods that they were trying to utilize. So as a last resort, like most people do, they went and visited Orula, right? And Orula identified certain plants that were going to be able to assist them medically, and marijuana was one of them, you know? Um, when they started consuming and utilizing and receiving all the benefits, they said, good Lord, we have to always incorporate this in our routine. Um, you know, when you hear information like that, you being a practitioner, you being someone that I know to be so faithful to Ifa, how does that confirmation make you feel, especially you, apart from being a recipient of the benefits of cannabis, but opening a business and a brand to help others, you know, how does that confirmation make you feel? Well, again, from the islands, I don't know, if, is this a video podcast? Yes, sir. Sorry, right, so boom. I'm from an era before dreadlocks was a fashion. Yeah. You know, I was the first in my family to have dreadlocks. Wow, that's ironic, yeah. Most right? people would probably think the opposite, yeah. Because in the islands, if you had dreadlocks, it was not just, all right, you have long hair. It was, it meant you Rastafarian. Yeah, yeah, it was serious. It was, it was serious. Yeah. And if a Rastafarian thought you just had dreadlocks for a fashion, they would cut they yeah, would they like hold down, you down and down cut your hair. You, yeah. In the islands, it was serious. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it was serious. Growing up in the in the early nineties, it was, it was serious. Like you, you weren't allowed to have pretty locks. It's like you know, it's not a fashion thing. No, it was it was a culture, and apart from that, if you had them, it was because you were baptized Raz, You know, so exactly. It, it was they were the made men of so, that of that of that of that area. Yeah. And as far as cannabis culture goes, uh, anybody from the islands, like you know, heard probably like Bob Marley or something like of that. Of course. Cannabis in the Rastafarian community is is a part of you know the sacrament. So it's a part of prayer. It's a part of ritual. It's it's fully incorporated into the movement. You know, it's it's not only a part of the religious movement. It's a part of the lifestyle. So that culture was was you know a part of my culture. It's, it's the island culture. So my my introduction to it was different from most. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, so for me to um, see the benefits of it, I've been around elders and, you know, old folks that have been trying to tap into the properties of, of cannabis for years and years. However, they were always, you know, criminals looked at, saw that yeah. and, 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 you know, fought as criminals. And that, that was the kind of like duality that I fought, whereas I see this plant, I see it as a, you know, I've seen people heal cancer. Like, I've, I've been around Dr. Sebi. I've been around Dr. Sebi wow. physically. we were actually just talking about him recently, man. What a, what a gentleman. You yeah. Know? And they uh, say, you know, not to, no gossip and nothing like that, but they're saying that if he wasn't initiated in Ifa, he actually delved into Ifa literature to come to some conclusions, man. For sure. That's incredible. For sure. I've seen doc, uh, Dr. Sebi twice, in person, just like I'm talking to you. Wow. What was yeah. he like? Super cool, super confident. He would jump and he would he would just so we having this talks like he would be talking and talking and he'd be like okay so here's what why you need to take CMOS yeah because CMOS has you know 19 compounds that will do this and it will make your knees strong if you don't think so I'm 76 years he jump off the chair and boom jump off the table and land on his knees I seen him jump off the stage land on, I would not do that and I was about 25 I'm like okay whatever this man is on. That's what we need. Give me, give it to me now, yeah. now, 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 now. Yeah, like, yeah. He was, he was the truth. How does his, pa how did his passing affect you? <sighs> Doctor Sebi was a modern day medical Malcolm X. Wow, so radical that he, 
and I don't know how popular this is, but this is my very personal experience. My 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 very personal ex opinion is so dedicated, so ex extreme to the truth that he sacrificed himself for the bigger picture, and we probably won't realize it until a couple Running generations later. That's incredible. Where where does the vision for Green Source come from? Uh, the vision for Green Source comes from. A couple of things. Uh, first of all, Green Source is a medicinal clinic. Basically, we, um, I myself am not a physician, but I am a businessman. Yes. I was inspired to uh, take on a, a business aspect to the medical field because in this specific niche market of the medical field, there is only one service available, which is cannabis certifications. For you to issue a cannabis certification in the state of Florida, you have to be a physician. Correct. I'm not a physician, mm -hmm. but I know a whole lot of people that wants the cannabis certifications. Yes. So, you know, me being me, found a gap, found a need, son found of, a want. Son of an issue. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, supply and demand. I yeah. found the demand. I made the supply. I figured, you know, you know, why wouldn't a physician want to work for me if they just want to be a physician? If you really want to be a doctor, I'll hire you. You could just be a doctor. Yeah, you focus on your passions. Exactly. Yeah. I'll bring you patients. All you do is yeah. do what you do. I'm a DJ. Yeah. If you would just give me the gigs, I would stay in the club all night and yeah. just DJ. Yeah. Same business model. Yeah. So, yeah, me being a business mind, I saw an opportunity. I was actually introduced to this whole industry, industry as a professional, as the DJ where I was able to uh, host cannabis community events. And they were very popular. Very. They still are very popular. Yeah. You still yeah. got them going on. Still, still going on. Nice. So uh, from the community events, I was working with, you know, professionals and medical professionals that are doing what I'm doing now. Nice. And I realized, like, most of them are just kind of in it for the money, kind of in and go. Yeah. And I would see one one year, one a couple of months, and I'm like, that's crazy that they will walk away from the opportunity like it is, you know, so... As our community grew, I noticed the, the, the physicians were just kind of coming and going. It was like a passing thing for them, a retirement thing. And, you know, I, I kind of took it more serious. So uh, I did my research for maybe a year or two. I consulted EFA, of course. Yeah. Um, I got the green light. and a very green light. And I, yeah. I, I went full steam ahead, for sure. Yeah. I tell you, I think the most ironic part is um, we have to really avoid as traditional practitioners of indigenous faiths to allow new age concepts, new world concepts to really, you know, water down what we've always believed. It, it's a really ironic thing, but, you know, cannabis has always been a part of Ifa. You know, I was speaking to um, one of my colleagues recently. He's been to Africa, and it's not uncommon. You'll, you'll go outside of an Ifa temple, and you'll see Bawa Laos consuming right there. Really? In the street. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The so during consultation? Not during consultation, okay, but yeah. let's say, okay, <laughs> we just got done with the consultation. We're outside. We're doing our Bawa Lao, you know, thing. They'll pass one around, you know what I'm saying? Because it's to them, apart from all the benefits, it's they almost look at it as a way of what we've just done. Let's congregate like this to be able to send our message to heaven. And in the Oduo Barayekun, it says that even above tobacco, the leaf that had the direct relationship with God was cannabis. In the Oduo Barayekun was where Eshu was Olodumari's gardener, right? And Olodumari's personal plant was cannabis. Hmm. But Eshu was a bad boy, and he started dipping into Olodumari's stash to the point where he was becoming a little bit unproductive, right? Um, and Olodumari caught him, and he said, all you had to do was ask, and I would have shared it with you, but everything in moderation, right? Mm -hmm. But Eshu wasn't hearing that, and little by little, he delved and delved and delved and delved, and he just stayed in the garden. Forever. Of course it would be Eshu. You know, but that he was the one who actually had the secrets to be able to construct it. So it's ironic you being his son and, um, you know, being in this industry and doing so well, it's 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 preordained, you know. Um, what is the most gratifying part about your work, you know, as uh, apart from obviously all the benefits that come with it, you know, what is some of the most gratifying aspects of it? The most gratifying aspect is honestly being involved in an industry that I've been involved with, you know, kind of involuntarily from a teenager to now and always been persecuted about, you know, from parents to outsiders to police to from everybody. You know what I mean? The thing that everybody looked down on me on now is the opener of the door that I, 
that not only will shine the light on me for respect, but also open the door for me to help everybody. So the thing that most people look down on me on now, 10, 20 years later, I'm able to help you in whatever situation you are. Like, you know, because, you know, everybody, everybody needs that. And um, whether it's prescribing you medicine, whether it's financial, whether it's opportunity, whatever it is, I'm in, I'm in a position, it makes me feel good to be in a position to help everybody, whether they look down on me or not, because of cannabis. That's, that's to me, the biggest gratification that I've felt. Absolutely. You're helping so many people, you know, by way of this team building that you've created and having all these professionals and amazing people, giving people what they need to not only have a quality of life, but to survive, right? For sure. I, I think the, the most wild thing to me is just how accepting the medical community has been for, you know, you to be able to proceed with this organization. But what are the detractors saying, you know, because when you're a trendsetter, when you're a visionary, when you're really pioneering something, because you're right here at the beginning, you know, what are what are you what are some of your detractors saying possibly? And more importantly, where do you think their motivations are coming from and how do you feel about them? Um, well, first of all, I'm a competitive person. And um, when it comes to business competition, I, I, I feel like I should take it just as that and nothing else. Yeah. However, the statistics are, are very plain, and I'm pretty sure I'm like the only black owner of a clinic in the whole city of Orlando, in the wow. whole Orange County. Wow. Um, not only that, I'm about 10 to 15 years younger than any other business owner in the city. Wow. So that right there alone is probably motivation for, uh, for people to not give me the respect that I deserve or, you know, maybe that I don't, that I don't earn. And, yeah. and that is something that I would take, you know, in stride as well. So it's something that in encouraged me to go hard. It's something that I've realized that people will like me or hate me because, you know, statistically, yeah. but, um, my drive and, uh, obviously my footstep in the business being less than a year old and, you know, the trend that I'm on, I can't see that, uh, I can't be anything more than super blessed from a ruler right now. Yeah, yeah, especially, you know, it's it's the trailblazing that, you know, sometimes people might not understand, and until they see that finished product, which you're getting towards, you know, at that point is when they're like, hey, you know, whatever Tony's doing, maybe we should start doing that, you know, with all the innovative things that you've mentioned you're doing. Um, where is cannabis going? What is the What is the next trend? What is the next manifestation of this medicine now? Uh, the next manifestation of cannabis in America is legalization, full, fully legalization. Federally, and, everything. Yep, that's 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 going to be the move that everybody notices. As of now, it's uh, been trending almost in about 40 states that, you know, some form of legalization, medical or recreation is passed. So um, it, it's inevitable that, rec that recreation, basically federal legalization of the cannabis plan as a whole, should be coming within the next 10 years. You know, um, what's his name? Joseph Biden. Correct. He promised to take care of it, but I don't see him taking care of it in this administration. Yeah, he might not have the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the the traction that is gained is it's inevitable. Yeah. And on top of that, because um, the government has been giving more legislative room for for um, studies for medicinal research and so forth, it's only going to gain more traction. Like. Cannabis is the truth. Canna um, cancer is one of our biggest plagues. Correct. And, you know, cancer is a whole different conversation, man. Like, they're trying to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what CB was on. He was trying to, and that's what yeah, was so he told you. about him. He mm -hmm. was all about the prevention, you know, which was such an EFA concept. And, you know, if you got to the point where you're unable to prevent, then we have this option, and now that interruption as well. You know, what is the agenda? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Sabi was on, bro. He, that's why so many people talk um, took him as extreme, because he had to do so much research to find out the ancient nutritional facts of tribal people in on Earth, yeah. not even just in, like, Africa. Or, like, beyond. you know, he was based in South, South America. Yeah. So most of his treatments from the Amazon... Or from you know like Africa and the Congo Delta yeah, region, like yeah. it's things, it's it's herbal medicine that people have been surviving on for Ever. millennia, Ever. right? So, um, like Sebi would tell you straight up, don't eat, 
spaghetti, don't eat meatballs, don't eat tomato sauce, don't eat noodles, don't eat. <laughs> so you be looking at Sammy like, well, damn, what should I eat? It wasn't there in the beginning. Yeah, he's like, you got to go back <laughs> you to know, the sauce. All right, so if you're going to eat noodles, you should be eating quinoa noodles. You should be eating these kind of tomatoes. And, you know, it, and honestly, if you, you know, it's, it was extreme, but, you know, Sammy would tell us, like, you know, the, the food that they're giving us technically isn't food. And that was... Wow. That was for you to fight the 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 health industry, the food industry. You got a you got a pharmaceutical. You, you you're fighting a zillion dollars. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you know, Doctor Sebi one unfortunately man. died in a third world country. Yeah, in a in, in a little police department that you could pay a thousand dollars to kill almost anybody. Like it's sad, but it's crazy. Yeah, it's just it's it's a crazy narrative. Crazy. That, you know, just sad that we lost a, 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 a basically a, a sign of light within him, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, to me, you know, everything in his path, and Sabi definitely played his his role. Sabi lived; you know, he he acted young, but Sabi was you know seventy, eighty years old. You no, know, and he ignited the mind of so many trying to carry on his work, and were inspired by him, you know. It's and he a, will ignite many more. I have a question now, mind you. Cannabis can be pretty intimidating. And why do I say this? Because, you know, when I was a young guy, like in Miami, where we're from, or, you know, when I would visit New York and stuff like that, you'd hear some pretty common terms. You know, you'd hear, you know, I don't know, Reggie, you know, the regular stuff. You might hear about a line called diesel, things like that. I hear about the stuff, like the names and things now, and I get completely lost. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Now. So, like, let's say I was to go into, like, a dispensary. I just got my card. You know, I, I, I have, you know, maybe some anxiety. Maybe I deal with depression. Maybe I have some physical ailments. Could you explain, really, the difference between, like, a, a sativa, an indica, a hybrid for dummies? Like, people that are just coming in, like, I want these benefits, but I don't want to look, you know, crazy, you know, talking about all these different strands and whatnot, you know. Okay, cannabis 101. Yeah. All right, so for the regular Joe, you've probably been smoking cannabis for, you know, five, ten years, and, and this is no disrespect to anybody, but the average Joe have been smoking before they've had an educational background in cannabis. Sure. So, going to your street cousin... You know, <laughs> <laughs> that you've been getting your street cousin supply mm -hmm. from for the last five, ten years. You know, you've probably been offered, you know, strain X or strain Z. And you've never had a question about if if you've been educated enough, maybe you had some kind of form of Google. Oh, I wonder what's sour diesel or yeah. platinum bubba. Just Google it. But even up until the last five years, like Googling that information wasn't even super accurate because yeah. this was, you know, the growers would, would, would kind of protect their strand. Exactly. Right. Because so that's not easy. The right. information was, was kind of, you know, hidden. Um, so now in the last five years, we've been blessed with the opportunity for uh, websites like leafly.com, L E A F L Y.com, or weedmaps.com. And, you can kind of go on there and get a whole background, a whole biopsy on on every strain, and it's thousands and thousands of strains. Like you say, based on the back in the day, there was maybe like two or three. It was Reggie, yeah. There was Zona, and there was Crippy. Well. Yeah, that sure. was it. That was it. I was yeah, like, man, man I, someone just told me no. I just had the uh, what is it? The super the, the super biscotti rainbow, you know, unicorn. Yeah, exactly, like, exactly, exactly. Yeah, you, you, they pick all these these candles right here. Yeah, walking, the Oya Shango Eshu you know, Yamaya. You're walking by this <laughs> stuff and it's punching you right in the face in all the right ways. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I wish I got hit like that every day, but I was like, yo, this is wild. And for the price point that they're getting it at is what's what's so beautiful because i'm like hey man how much he's like bro the canister was 15 dollars bro mm -hmm. i said yo for 50 there was no you couldn't even get that for a thousand dollars yeah no nah, the ago. industry is different bro it's 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 a great time to get into the cannabis world yeah as a consumer as a, a distributor as a manufacturer whatever you whatever your interest is in cannabis right now is a perfect time to get it that's beautiful and, and orula he saw these, you know, things thousands of years ago. You know, Orula had a situation one time, and the first time you really see Orumila consuming was in the Odu of Ofum Batrubo. It's also known as Ofum Taba or Ofum Batutu. And he had a lot of enemies, actually. It wasn't uh, a normal circumstance, you know. And um, he did divination for himself, 
And when he did it, this old dude was revealed where he first said he needed to um, utilize a plant um, known as cannabis, right? And he was obviously the stigma. He didn't really know about it either. It wasn't so much socially as, you know, this was still the point in time where people were experimenting with plants, trying to figure out whether they were poisonous or the effects they were having. And he decided to, you know, light it on fire, right? And um, when he did... He found himself in a very elevated state where he wasn't necessarily wishing for the downfall of his enemies as much as his own benefit, right? The cannabis plant, hearing his plight in so much high definition, destroyed all of his enemies, completely <laughs> eliminated and removed them altogether. And from that day forward, he said, the day any of my children have extreme war, vicious war, spiritual war, this is the plant we're going to lean on to be able to come out victorious. So I ask you, somebody who is in and has used and has, has been a part of the, this lifestyle, you know, is there a spiritual component to when you, you smoke? All right. So to give you a complete, honest answer on that, cannabis is a, is a plan of intent. And to me, it enhances, it enhances your emotion if you stick to the chemistry right. If you are an artist and you want it to be extremely creative and you want to smoke a sativa, a great sativa, example, sour diesel. Yeah. It's almost sativa. a purebred sativa. Wow. New York people perfected the sour diesel brand. Oh, yeah. They had their own stream, New York diesel. It was one of my favorite daytime smokes. I call it the waffle. Because you start, you start your day. Yeah. The, for people that like to go to work, it's one of those that will take you to work and you would ignore your angry boss. <laughs> if you're an artist, you would feel great about painting something that day. If you're an athlete, the workout is, that's why I'm here. Now, you could flip it all around by smoking an indica and everything is out the window. If you're like a boss like me, you don't want to have any meetings. You're like, Joseph, nah, just one got to reschedule. I'll see you in the next two months. You're done. It's, it's done. But at the same time, if you smoke that indica for break, for dinner, sorry, same thing. Wrap up your day. As somebody that's as busy and as focused as me, it's hard for me to wind down. You know, insomnia is something that I suffered with for years. Yeah. I don't care what I've done that day. It was just hard for me to wind down and get eight hours of sleep because there's always more to do. Always what I can do. Yeah, All right, I'm up. Compressed. I might as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, as far as taking the full benefits for of of cannabis you want to just basically know what you're doing all right anybody can go down the wrong path as far as overdoing anything uh, there's never i don't think there's no recorded cases of cannabis overdose that has led to any serious injury of death maybe someone has fallen asleep at the wheel yeah but there's no recorded deaths yeah ever in history of the world jesus because of cannabis yeah all right like just because of cannabis yeah. you may have fall asleep but you was probably drinking that night too yeah well you have to know how to utilize it it's like uh, ifa said everything in moderation you know as um and now you, you speak about 40 states already in this country um leaning towards you know the recreational and ultimately possibly federally being approved within 10 years you know what other countries have already reached this uh this milestone um well the newest country in the trend right now they're calling it the new exotic amsterdam <clears throat> is thailand really thailand thailand has gone fully recreational nice. and thailand has been invaded by western brands more specifically california and american brands so uh if you're familiar but familiar with cannabis culture in america cookies uh jungle boys runs all of those stuff you can see in thailand also the cannabis culture is so the tourist culture is connected to the cannabis culture so the street vendors are everywhere so you know so you're just walking down the just, alley it's, the boulevard. Yeah, it's basically weed everywhere it's, it's it's the new amsterdam it's a utopia it's yeah weedtopia <laughs> <laughs> you know and um I mean, globally, you know, I, I I, mean, to reference Snoop Dogg, if he ever wants to be on the podcast as well, we love you. Snoop? Yeah. But, you know, Snoop. You know how many people call me Snoop Dogg every day? I mean, you put some glasses on. 
you put some glasses on and you put a you know a blue checkered plaid uh, you know nineties with some khakis on. Yeah. I don't ever do either, but white people <laughs> definitely consider me stupid dog every week. Take a photo. Sure. At least one person every week, bro. Is, yeah. yeah. But he said something that was really enlightened. He said, you know, if you bring a twenty four pack of beer to my neighborhood and everybody sits down and drinks, um, somebody might die. For sure. But if you bring a sack and um, everybody rolls up and is passing around, yo, people will fall in love with each other, right? And when I heard that, I realized um, maybe the world needs this. I mean, Tony, what do you think the global impact of complete recreational free use of cannabis could mean for the world? Boy, the funny thing is the only thing that I think would really change is attitude, is stigma. The only thing that I can see of changing is the same way that the world is transitioning into open mindsets, into everything culturally, whether it's homosexuality, you know, whether it's, you know, shoot, we... we we're still living in a racist America. We're still yeah. facing the reality that we we transition yeah. and that we, we we're living with equal people from equal races. Yeah. It's the same exact stigma. It's the same exact 1900 stigma that we are realizing that, okay, our grandparents and maybe our great grandparents may have held dear to, to them and raised us on, but maybe there's more. You know, and furthermore, it's dealing with the hypocrisy the hypocrisy in 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 everybody because if you're a smoker yeah you you probably are with cannabis if you're not a smoker you've you've probably dealt with a torn feeling as if well I don't smoke so it's nothing to do with me yeah or well I don't smoke so that's horrible yeah so you've probably either looked down on someone with cannabis or have been sympathetic with cannabis you've never seen cannabis as a medicine not only as a medicine but as a very very effective natural alternative and i think a big part that plays in that is that it's not always presented in the best light you it's know? exactly the impression if you always present a certain demographic um with a said situation with said scenario ultimately that's going to start getting ingrained in the impression that the popular image has of it so every time um, you see, and you know, the ironic thing about it is I can't remember the last time I saw an organization such as yours on TV having a commercial or anything. We're not allowed to advertise anywhere. That's ironic because that means who can, that someone else is controlling you all's narrative, you know, rather than you being able to present, Hey, said person suffered from epilepsy. We have that under control. Said person is in remission from cancer. We don't have all those testimonials nope. with you guys. The only way we get to advertise is through interviews and vice news, special news interviews. Word and of mouth. We have cannabis. The medical cannabis field is the the only, the only known cure to pediatric epilepsy. Yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible, man. Yeah. It's the only known sedative to pediatric auto, um, autism. It's the only new, known all natural cure to chemotherapy's side effects. Yeah. Literally, the only known tested cure, all natural, whereas there is no alternative side derivatives. Effects, yeah. There's no crazy side effects other than sleep. I need more of it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a that, side effect that everybody and would love. Like, you know? I just gave you three reasons. You could pick yeah. any one of them. And that's monumental. It's yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, you so. know, when, when you have a narrative that's pushing people away from this option, you know, and, and this is only interpretive, but you have to wonder what is the agenda ultimately. And, you know, each person has to come to that conclusion. I tell you, you know, you being in the industry, you know, what would you tell to somebody who has that fear of, you know, I've heard about cannabis or I've used it, you know, uh, recreationally, casually, but, you know, hasn't delved into all of the benefits it can give them. What could you tell somebody that's worried about that stigma leaving a stain on them? Uh, well, the good thing is we're in 2023 and we're in the age of technology. Yeah. And um, we're in a, a spot that if you do proper research, there is no doubt that you would be, you know, led in that direction as far as top quality grade alter natural alternatives. 
Uh, if you want some suggestions on where to research, little known fact is um, Israel is one of the uh, leading countries in cannabis medical research. Wow. Israel has been doing medical cannabis research for about 25 years more ahead of the, the America, before like Americans were even legally allowed to study cannabis. Uh, Canada is probably about five or 10 years ahead. And then of course, Amsterdam and, and Europe. But Israel by far has spent the most money and the most time into cannabis research. That's beautiful. Natural medicinal research. So if you're somebody that are looking into like cancer, PTSD, ALS, you know, any kind of chronic pain, any kind of uh, PTSD, anxiety, depression, insomnia, if you really want super duper specific facts on not only just, oh, smoke weed, no, do take a tincture, find this specific strain to take the... They, they, that's how deep they went in Israel. And that's incredible because you know I mean? now it's not just one plant. You're looking at different strains and it's how it can affect. thousands of strains. But the, that's what's so beautiful is that you, okay, because you might have a condition and you go to a pharmacy and be like, hey, I have a headache. Well, here's, I don't know, whatever, a Tylenol, whatever. But if that doesn't work for you, you're done. Mm -hmm. With what you're talking about is, okay, um, what are you suffering from? PTSD? Try this, Poppy. Okay, that didn't work. All right, let's try this one. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on and on and on. And I see it being the medicine of man, you know, specifically tailored towards you. And, and what I love is that I'm seeing that there's the effort on y'all's behalf to actually give people an option. Educate. Educate, give people an option, not leave them hopeless because that's the big issue. Okay, nothing works for me. Where do I go from here with my condition? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I just lay down and die, you know? Or do I educate myself, like yep. you're saying, you know? Tony. Where is cannabis going? It's going to the top, man. And um, the best thing I see once recreation passes is giving power to the people. So, like we said, education. Education is 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 my key. Um, to me, for Green Source, what's going to separate my company and my brand from everyone else is community focus. Whereas I want to constantly interact with the community where we do events for entertainment, but mostly edu education. The average person that just goes to dispensary, they're sold products, but it's not like coming into Botanica and you have somebody explaining each product for you. Definitely. And that's that the experience that yeah. I need. So once you come in and you get your certification, you are assigned a doctor. So just like that, you went to the doctor because your elbow hurt, he wrote you a prescription, you took a pill and it didn't work, you're gonna call that doctor back. Yeah. I want that relationship. I want you to know that we have you. If something doesn't work, we can recommend you a whole barrage of things and on and on top of that if something works let's compound that and see what works better you know what i mean yeah. and on top of that we try to we try to discuss um um community topic groups so let's say we have aids patients yeah. hiv patients which is you know something that is very serious here in central florida oh yeah and we have we have talk groups we have community talk groups like if you're going through something as serious as hiv not only are you more open to open up to others in that situation, yeah. which we also have uh, psychiatrists on board, nice, but you're also open to hearing what natural treatments work best for everyone. Of course, because that medication is intense and very expensive. Those kind of talks and yeah. groups are very far in between. Yeah, and we want to provide that kind of atmosphere, that kind of community. Like I said, education. It's it's bringing everybody together. And that's my long-term goal. I want to be. I want Green Source to be the company that people go to in Central Florida, not only for medication but for advice, for community. I want to be the corporate botanica I'm with it. of cannabis. No, and you're gonna help so many people as you already have. I mean, what are some of the services um, that people go to Green Source for? Like, what are the various things they can accomplish there? Do you facilitate the card assignment, the doctor? You know, what are the various things they're gonna get with you guys? So right now, Green Source, we basically specialize in one specific service that's cannabis recommendation. So basically, if you feel like cannabis is gonna benefit you in any sorts of way, you contact us directly, and we will basically get into all the details and why we feel like cannabis would. Um, benefit that specific condition so all right bubble allow you're in there on the mat on your knees and you 
I don't know how you sit with your knees crossed all that time. You know, Mama <laughs> asked me to kneel out. I'm like, oh my God, my knees are. I need the tensor. I need the tensor. <laughs> exactly. Tensor, I, need I need some tensor. lotion or something. <laughs> so basically, our job is to educate you into what you want to get. All right. And then we'll send you into a whole barrage. There are mm, over 40, 40 dispensaries in the state of Florida, 40 different brands of dispensaries in the state of Florida. I think there are maybe over 100 in the city of Orlando almost at this point. Yeah, there's one here on the corner. There's a couple. You see them popping up, thank God. Yeah, yeah they are. They Florida just uh, released 100 more licenses, so they're going to be a whole lot more popping up in the next wow. few years. And that's great because before then it was all corporate. Now we have local farmers. We have the small people that are getting the opportunity to get in now. Finally. Yep. So um, look out for our dispensaries. Uh, take advantage of the dispensaries. The dispensaries are are literally doing their best to provide everybody with whatever best products that they can give. Everything has to be locally grown, certified by the FDA right here in the state. As you guys know, Florida is, is a great state to do any kind of produce. Uh, we have more rain. We have more sunshine in California, honestly. Yeah. So um, as long as we continue the trend and allow the growers to get that experience in to grow better or grow longer, that's it's it's Florida's going to be on top, bro. 10 years. 10 years, Florida's going to be the next California. I tell you, Odomela has selected you and Ifa has selected you to be a beacon for our people, to be able to show them the options they have, give them the medicine they need the same way he did when he was here. Um, he will always look upon you guys with good eyes. Very yeah. proud of all the work you're doing and, uh, you know, how you've incorporated so well into your situation. Do you have any final thoughts and words for our community, your community, and uh, the community at large? Uh, I would like to end on saying that, first of all, I appreciate you for bringing me here. What are we, boy? And uh, not only for bringing me here at this this show, you know what I mean, but but bringing me here at this point in life. It was a pleasure. You know what I mean, because as you you've 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 kind of referenced to a few times, I would definitely confirm that Arula was definitely the green light that that allowed me to to have the confidence to overcome fear to move forward yeah. yeah so um my my nature is is a driven you know i i own five llc's here in, in central florida and um the cannabis industry was something that i always was on the fringes of you know i, would, I didn't mind being involved but diving in full-time was something that i was hesitant of not only because of the nature of the industry but just because of cir cir circumstances and um, I, I would definitely say that I'm, I'm very, very, very appreciative to not only you, you know, as my babalao, but as, you know, an element that has guided me throughout the years to help me, to help reassure me, to help confirm my path. And, and I, I just want to say out there, like, if you guys have doubts, you can doubt Joseph, you can doubt whatever, but don't, don't ever doubt yourself. I, you know what I mean, don't. Don't ever doubt yourself. And that's something that I had to realize. Like, you confirmed what was inside of me. And I was like, okay, let's go. And it's off to the races. I, I remember your Ita and, you know, it manifested the way it needed to. And thank you. And what an amazing conversation. I think it's going to hit so many people. I think it's going to motivate so many people. And I'm sure they're going to be happy to know there's a resource such as you guys or ourselves for whatever it may be whether it be their cannabis needs their spiritual needs and you know we're here to serve yeah and in case you guys need to find us you can check us out we are www.greensourcefl.com you can check us on instagram at green source florida spelled out or you can email us at info at green source fl.com call us up or check us out at downtown orlando 210 south bumby 407-374-3824 joseph my guy sounds good puppy thank you may Romila bless you and yes. if i bless you all right Oral. guys what an amazing conversation so much good information so many good prospects a couple notes uh, i want to leave off with before we go ahead and disconnect obviously all of that information uh, to reach out to Tony and uh, Green Source will be in the descriptions as well. BotanicaCandlesAndMore.com is up and running for any type of services or products you need. Um, the podcast is present on all major platforms. The membership program is up and running. Go ahead and join. Um, subscribe, like, share, comment. Big thank you from Our Roots Podcast. And until next time, see the light. <laughs>